Okay, hello, we're here for part five of my let's play of the original Free Space 2 CD-ROM. If you want to see the terrible failure that was part four, I will link it up here somewhere. Um, now, in that, I was playing on hard mode. And um, back in the 90s, hard mode actually meant hard. So I think we're going to go ahead and change that because I am not going to progress if I say it hard. So we'll go to medium and hopefully I'll be able to get through this time. So I will sit through the briefing again just in case anyone didn't watch the previous one. Um, so sorry to the people who've been following that we have to go through that again, but hey. Intelligence <sighs> has tracked Admiral Bosch's command frigate, the NTF oh Iceni, through subspace. We have vectored its course to the Sirius jump node. The 53rd is being scrambled to seek and destroy the Iceni before it escapes Deneb. We have pre-assigned your loadout and your fighters are now standing by. Report to the flight deck pronto. Thankfully, the briefing isn't that long for this one. So, the whole objective is just to destroy the leader of the NTF's ship and kill him, presumably. You'd think that would be an important mission. Engage full burners and intercept the Iceni. They are two kilometers from the Sirius jump node. Command, we're five clicks from that Corvette. Those coordinates you gave us were bogus. We don't stand a chance of catching that ship. You have your orders, pilot. Command, where's the blockade? Why isn't the Alliance guarding this node? Exactly. Our line of defense has been reprioritized for engagements elsewhere in the system. Fucking reprioritized. Why? This is the Admiral, like the guy who, who runs the NTF, the, the big bad guy, and there's no one blocking him from escaping. Why? Why would you do that? Huh, Command? What have you got going on, eh? Fucking bullshit. You know, politicians and I people in the higher ups. To intercept us have failed, yeah. pilots. Would be well advised to question the wisdom of your yeah, leaders. Yeah, well, I am questioning Help. the wisdom of our leaders. Engage subspace drive. The ICN has jumped. I repeat, the ICN has jumped. Bureaucrats, bureaucrats and higher ups who don't really tell you what's Request going on. Request a status brief, command. What the hell is going on here? You're out of line, pilot. Out of line? Who said to me? I don't think so. We're risking our lives out here. We deserve a straight answer. You can discuss this at your debriefing. We now have reports that rebel vessels are heading for the jump node. Stand by for mission update. Command out. Damn it! Command let Bosch escape! Yeah, he did, didn't he? What are you talking about? They pulled the blockade. They gave us the wrong coordinates. There's no other explanation. Why? Why would they, they let him go? They didn't give us the wrong coordinates. They just you tell didn't me, block pilot, it. I'm informed on a need-to-know basis. Yeah. Stand down. We're on your side oh, here. I've got a bit of a headache. Why did we oh, attack the Iceni? Why did we destroy that cargo? What? I can live with being a pawn if the game makes sense. Inbound freighters with Loki escort. All right, These targets all right, escape focus. the asteroid depot. Focus. Destroy those ships before they reach the node. Let's see if I can actually kill Better anything. Better wing here. Target acquired and closing in. It's medium now, so you'd think I'd stand a chance. Do I need to play with my shields? Maybe not. Let's see how I go. I know when I was very young I would have played on easy mode because I just wouldn't have been able to handle the action. Okay, so there's a laser turret. Um, but I really want to go for the fucking... Okay, here we go. Here we go. Try not to hit my own people. Oh, 
ship come get me. You like when friendlies fly right in front of you and you're like, come on, trying not to kill you. Yeah, I've been practicing my vocals, so I'm a little bit already like, rah! Rah! Come on! Let's do this! We army complete, sir. You're good to Thank go. Thank you! Where are the bad guys? There should be some more coming. And these are the ones with the Two ETF cruisers have jumped head. in. The NTC Glorious and the NTC Impervious. They are heading for the node. Eliminate the fighter escort pilots. We'll deploy the Samtic to handle the cruisers. Those cruisers have anti-fighter beams with an effective range of 1,500 meters. Yeah, so Lure the escort away from the cruisers before you engage. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Fucking! Fucking! Fucking suck! Check your sex! Bosch's command frigate reached the Sirius jump node. I have received no explanation either on or off the record for what happened out there. I assume we'll be informed on a need-to-know basis. Yeah. Good job neutralizing those fighters and freighters. You've served the 53rd Hammerheads well. Your performance in this last mission proves you have what it takes to be oh, an ace yeah, pilot. Right. I've recommended your transfer to the 107th Ravens. They lost many good officers in Deneb, and they could use someone with your talents. They're a top-notch unit. I know you'll make us proud. Good luck with your new assignment, pilot. Command has ordered the Aquitaine to return to the Capella system. Admiral Petrarch will address the crew at 0630. Yeah, so basically, you're you're so good, we're gonna kick you out to some other group. I killed two, though! And I did hit a few friendlies, oh well. Um, but at least that's something, hey. Alright, let's go to the captain's ramblings <laughs> Welcome to the 107th Ravens oh, pilot. It's a lieutenant, I'm lieutenant not a Samza, squadron leader. 
As you know, the Aquitaine is now en route to the Gamma Draconis system. The details of the situation there have been classified at the highest mm. level, so I'm as much in the dark as you are. The Admiral will brief the crew when we reach 3rd Fleet Headquarters in Capella. The 107th is a heavy assault squadron, oh so no. our fighter of choice is the Hercules Mark II. Implementing advances in fusion drive technology, the Mark II improves the assault fighter's speed and maneuverability without sacrificing loadout. The Herc has only two missile banks, but its ordnance capacity is greater than the Myrmidons. The original Herc won the Great War, so we're proud to carry on the tradition. Yeah, just bombers. I'm more likely to die in I a recommend bomber. that you review the Herc II training modules oh before no, the Aquitaine be arrives training. in Capella. These modules review advanced tactics, such as countermeasures and energy management. I could have used that the on Herc hard II mode. The Herc II is slower than the Myrmidon you've been flying with the 53rd. So learn how to evade missiles and equalize shields. These skills will help you push your fighter to the limits, master them, and the life you save may be your own. According to your file, you are now authorized to use the GTW-5A Prometheus R, the GTM-19 harpoon, Ooh, harpoon, and the GTM-4 Hornet, Hornet missile. Missile. The Prometheus R is like a retrofit this. of a cannon developed during the Great War. After the Alliance lost contact with Earth, we lacked materials required for mass okay. production. So engineers developed this retrofit version. The Prometheus packs a bigger wallop than the Subak HL-7, but it will drain your power reserves yeah. with extended use. It's very power hungry. The Harpoon and the Hornet are both yes. aspect-seeking missiles. Aspect -seeking. While the Harpoon fires individual warheads, the Hornet launches a swarm of four projectiles. Like Eight these. if you're in double fire mode. The training modules cover the proper technique for firing aspect-seeking missiles, so be sure to review that section carefully. That's all for now, pilot. The Aquitaine will arrive in Capella in four hours. All right, let's get the training over with. Welcome, Welcome to, to Training, training Simulator, Simulator Module, module TSM-107M. TSM Advanced okay. qualification for the Hercules Mark II Heavy Assault Fighter. This module has been designed to acquaint pilots with communication systems, countermeasures, right. and aspect-seeking missiles. TSM units oh, are approved for yeah. use as part of the GTVA yeah. combat training program or as a review for Got qualified pilots. The TSM, the TSM series, series is, is not intended, intended as, a as a substitute for actual, actual field, field training. training. Yeah, okay. Oh. Welcome to module TSM 107M. Don't touch the controls until you are told to do so. Don't touch the controls until you are told to do so. You will fail this session if you do not follow instructions carefully. Let's begin with messaging. For class A qualification, you learned how to call in a support ship to rearm and repair subsystems. Now, we'll show you how to give orders to pilots under your command. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Our target for this simulation will be an Argo class transport. Target the transport. Use your hostile targeting control. Good. Now you'll call in your reinforcements. Tracking. Press the communications key to bring up the messaging window. Select reinforcements. Then select the wing you want to call in. Epsilon wing is your only option, so oh, hit the one key. I forgot about reinforcements. So, hmm, how long would you <laughs> All the time. Confirm that you still have the transport targeted. Yes, I do. Now have Epsilon Wing destroy the transport. Press the communications key to bring up your messaging box again. Select two to transmit your orders to a specific wing. Then hit one to choose Epsilon Wing. By selecting Epsilon Wing, you are sending your orders to that wing only. Alright. Now press the one Roger key that, sir. and Engaging Epsilon will destroy your target. Those guys doing those. Well done, Only one ship did it. Only one ship actually shot at it. The rest were fucking around, like just. Yeah. Order Epsilon Wing to destroy Transport Two. Do you remember your previous instruction? If not, consult the directives yes, list. Yes, sir. We'll take them down. Is that actually a chick in this game? Good work. Larger targets. Bombers or vessels with beam turrets are usually required to be larger than cruiser class. I love the 
also versions. note that reinforcements are not always available, and you will have authorization to issue orders only to specific wings and ships. Now, let's order Epsilon Wing to depart. Press the communications key to bring up the messaging window. Select two for Wing and one for Epsilon. Finally, you don't have to press tell me. Zero. I had a live stream soon. <coughs> I'm filming Excellent this right work. before a live stream. As you gain experience in combat, using the communications interface will become second nature. All yeah, right, pilot. Too many numbers. Now it's time to learn about countermeasures. Yeah, I've been using them. It's X. When you That's launch the only a countermeasure, survive. you present a new target for pursuing missiles. In theory, the missile should hit the countermeasure instead of ripping a hole through oh, your hull. It doesn't always work, though. I try. You need to use countermeasures to survive in battle. But you'll soon learn this yeah. tactic does not always it's annoying. work. For this exercise, we'll bring uh -oh. in a Leviathan class cruiser. Where is it? The cruiser no. will now launch missiles at you. Press the countermeasures key to evade the missiles. Immediately increase your forward velocity to maximum and move away from the pursuing missile. Push your afterburners to gain that extra burst of speed. Yellow triangle will appear on your HUD, hey, indicating the vector of the missile's approach. Triangle is indicator in the 3 or 9 o'clock position. Oh, three when the missile is minutes. nearly upon you, launch the countermeasure. Listen ah, to the beeping sound really of the missile it. lock to gauge the distance of the missile. The closer the beeps, the closer the missile. While launching countermeasures, turn your firing hard in sharp movements. This will also help throw the missile off the trail. If you aim the missile, an indicator will display in the upper portion of your targeting reticle. This will alert you to the fact that you successfully avoided your objective. The number of countermeasures remaining is indicated on your HUD below the weapons display. If you run out of countermeasures, call in the support ship. Ah, I'm so bad at avoiding them. Fucking. Like, how, how early do I have to launch them? I still got a blast even though That's I evaded enough for evading it. What? Missiles. Now, let's practice. Your Hercules Mark II heavy assault fighter is armed with two banks of harpoons. Please stand Unlike by. Unlike heat seekers like the Rock Eye, you must acquire a lock on your target in order for an aspect seeker to home. However, the aspect seeker is well worth the effort because its homing ability is much stronger. If a heat seeker loses track of its target, chances are it will not reacquire lock. Aspect seekers, on the other hand, will track their targets until they detonate. Transport 3 is now entering. Let's take this opportunity to learn another targeting control. You what have a reticle targeting control. Now so you use the reticle targeting control to target my fighter. Well done. Now, target Transport 3 using the reticle targeting control. Make sure the transport is in the center of your HUD. Excellent. Now, let's see how you do with those harpoons. Can Notice the red you? indicator moving towards your target. That's the aspect triangle. Once it is moved onto your target, you'll see the lock indicator. This means your harpoons are locked and ready to fire. Now, Can I fire, fire yet? one harpoon at the freighter. Note how fast the harpoon moves. This warhead delivers quite a punch. Woo! A round of harpoons can be fired every three seconds. Fire another round and note the countdown timer in your weapons gauge. Oh, yeah. The harpoon is almost useless if fired before lock has been acquired. That's a major distinction between the harpoon and the rock eye. Now, unload your harpoons until you destroy Transport 3. against moving targets. In order to gain aspect lock on a moving target, you must keep the target's lock box in a fixed position inside your HUD reticle. We'll now bring in the fighter drones. When the first drone enters, target it and acquire lock. Try to keep the target indicator in the center of your HUD reticle. Once you have acquired lock, fire a HUD. All aspect seekers function this way. 
from wow, a hornet really missile strong. to the Helios torpedo. In general, the larger and more powerful the warhead, the longer it will take to acquire lock and countdown between volleys. Now, let's have you face a real challenge. Multiple wings will appear simultaneously. Destroy them all. You must be in range of your target before you can gain asset lock. Get your burners to intercept the drones. Space drive yeah, to end this simulation. Shit, do I have enough time? I don't think I have enough time for another mission. I gotta wrap this up and get ready for um live streaming. Well done, pilot. Oh. You have successfully completed TSM 107 oh, no, advanced qualification for the Hercules Mark II heavy assault fighter. You are advised to proceed to training simulator module TSM 107 SE covering oh, shield management shield and, and the energy. energy transfer system. Yeah, all right. Um, I guess I should do that. Let's see if we can get it over with so that next time I play, we don't have to start with training. Welcome to training, training simulator, simulator module, module TSM 107 SE. Advanced qualification for the Hercules Mark II heavy assault fighter. This module oh, has been designed to acquaint pilots with shield management and the energy transfer system. I hope it's not too long, this one. TSM units. TSM units are approved for use as part of the GTVA combat training program or as a review for qualified pilots. Uh, the TSM series is not intended as a substitute for actual field training. Yeah, all right, let's go. Welcome to module TSM 107 SE, pilot. Don't, Don't touch, touch the, the controls, controls until you are told, told to do so. so. You will fail this session if you do not follow instructions carefully. First, let's take a look at the gauges and controls for your shield system. The Alliance acquired shielding technology from the Shivans during the Great War. Shield systems have been standard on Terran Vasudan fighters and bombers I'd suck for over the 30 years. Your Please shield system generates an energy one. shell that protects the hull of your ship from primary fire and missile blasts. As they absorb damage, your shields will weaken. However, your fighter will automatically regenerate its shields over time. Your shield integrity gauge is located in the lower right of your HUD. This gauge is now flashing. Your shield is divided into four quadrants. Each quadrant can withstand limited damage. When a shield quadrant sustains damage, the corresponding section of your shield integrity gauge will flash. Observe. Oh, it just disappeared. It Note the front of your shield is flashing as if you've taken a hit. It's not Observe flashing. Observe how the gauge just... changes as your shield sustains more damage. When a shield quadrant has been destroyed, all damage on that quadrant will impact the hull of your fighter. Yeah, it will Your shields flashing, will though. regenerate themselves automatically. Let's accelerate this process to save time. That was a bit weird. Now observe as the front quadrant of your shield repairs itself to full strength. Yeah, I see that. <sighs> Training, my goodness. Your shield is now fully recharged. Yay. Effective shield management can mean the difference between life and death. <laughs> the simplest way to manage your shield is the equalized yeah, quadrant function. I've been using that. I have damaged your front quadrant again. Use your equalized quadrants function to repair your shields. Well done. Your front section has been partially recharged. This shield energy came from your other three quadrants. Practice this function often. Yeah. I'm now going to reduce most of your shield strength. Note that three of your four quadrants are now near zero power. 
With your shield management okay. controls, you can maximize shield strength in a specific quadrant. First, maximize the strength in your front quadrant. Hey, okay. Okay, so that is how that works. Well done. Note hey. that your front quadrant is at full strength, while the other quadrants have been drained. Maximizing your front shield quadrant is especially useful when you're attacking the turret of a large ship. Yeah. This stuff now would have been I want you to maximize before. your rear shield quadrant. If you're pursuing an important objective and are being attacked from the rear, maximizing your rear shield quadrant can deflect the gunfire of your pursuer. Yeah, but at the same time, you're trying to steer now, and shoot equalize things. equalize quadrants again to distribute shield energy evenly around your ship. Like it's so we hard will conclude to have this module with an overview of your energy transfer in system while or you're ETS. Fighting. Oh my god, are we in not the doing lower any right fighting? Of your HUD in this are one? three bar gauges labeled G yeah. for guns, S <laughs> for shields, and E for engines. Yes, I, I have figured that one out. I you remember. can use your ETS controls to augment or diminish the energy allocated to each of these three systems. I did this very badly in the last video First, when I was trying to survive. Let's increase your weapon's energy allocation. <sighs> Observe that as you divert power to weapons, the energy levels for shields and engines drop. Yeah, and so does like my maximum speed and so on. Oh, is this not coming up in directives or I just do it? Hmm, that's weird. Usually this stuff comes up in directives. Oh, now it comes up once I've finished it. Oh, um, yeah, no, I did the right thing. The more energy diverted to weapons, the faster your primaries will recharge. Your weapons will not inflict greater damage at higher ETS but levels. But look, the maximum speed I can reach is now 27. High energy cannons, such as the Prometheus, can quickly deplete your weapon reserves. If you require a sustained barrage of gunfire, diverting energy to primaries may be necessary. Now, let's increase your shield allocation. Home three times. The higher your ETS setting for shields, the faster they'll recharge. Increasing your shield allocation may be critical in combat situations, such as stopping to rearm your fighter or flying through heavy oh, flak. Yeah. Now, divert more power yeah, to your engines. It's not the most Increasing power to engines will improve controls. your maximum speed by up to 30%, depending on the fighter's reactor capacity. Your afterburners will also recharge faster, enabling more frequent bursts of speed. For a slower fighter like the Hercules Mark II, increasing engine power may be necessary to chase down more maneuverable targets or cover large distances quickly. Just well give me a done. better reactor. This concludes module TSM 107 SE. Engage your subspace drive to end this simulation. Wow, no shooting. What an anticlimax. Congratulations, you have successfully completed TSM 107 SE Advanced Qualification for the Hercules Mark II Heavy Assault Fighter. Sorry about the anticlimax, I'm gonna go get ready to live stream. Next one will hopefully be a bit more exciting. Oh well, what can you do? Can't control the game. I'm out of here.